Building underwater habitats, even small ones, is surprisingly expensive. And although I'm not sure why, there's been a downturn in my Patreon over the past three months. I've lost about $230 worth of support. So if you like what I'm doing and want to see more habitats built faster, please consider following me on Patreon. I will love you forever and may even come to your house and touch wieners with you. You can watch live the 72-hour testing process as well as see Hamster enjoying his new luxurious expanded living accommodations after that point at twitch.tv slash hamster. I also sometimes use this feed to play video games and do funny screams. And of course, don't forget the merch. You've already forgotten it, haven't you? They said it couldn't be done. They said, nobody can link two habitats in an aquarium with tunnels. Alright, nobody actually said that, but I did it anyway. Crazy to think, all this started with one comment. This whole long tunnels saga of slow trial and error prototyping for this seemingly simple purpose of connecting two habitats underwater with a tunnel in such a way that the hamster can pass in dry conditions from one to the other, and that I can remove them, I can detach the, the interconnecting tunnel from both habitats without allowing water to enter at any point. Simple, right? Yet here we are, I think nearly a year later, and the problem is finally solved, familiarizing myself with the trillion fucking parts there are for plumbing out there, identifying the correct parts, receiving the wrong parts in the mail, reordering the correct parts, developing a methodology for purging water from the tunnel. But you know what, my beauties? It was all worth it. Because having perfected this modular tunnel system, which permits an underwater colony of arbitrary size to be constructed, there's no longer any technical barrier preventing it from growing indefinitely. The only limit is money. And critically, it's not a bespoke system, it's not a permanently attached system, it's completely repairable. I can at any time reflood one of the tunnels, having shut the gates, detach it, and remove any one of the portions of the colony from the rest for maintenance on the surface, while leaving the rest underwater and continuously operational. Going into this, of course, I didn't realize I was going to have to do all of that just to connect two habitats in an aquarium. But in order to establish a large colony with lots of habitats in a natural body of water, I was always going to have to solve these problems sooner or later. So thank you, tunnel guy. You troublemaking wise ass. This one's for you. I don't know how much of this I'm going to catch because my legs are likely to be in the way. Um, I found conflicting reports on the internet about whether silicone can cure underwater. Uh, some said that it needs moisture to cure, so it will cure underwater. Others said that it has to be dry. I'm just going to stick it in there and see if it works. Uh, again, a little bit of leaking is okay. It's either going to leak from the seal or from where I put the uh, docking collar on. I'm not happy with the docking collar. They sent me the wrong valve again, but I'm just or whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to use this one until they send me the right one, because it, it'll at least fit... And it's immediately bubbling from the hatch. That's kind of good and kind of not good. This is kind of a critical test of the docking procedure. Ah! Oh, I cut myself deeply. Wow. That metal sucks. That works better. I'm gonna go need a band-aid after this and disinfect it. And then I can use the compressed air hose here. Here you can see it purging. That doesn't look good. Still seems to be purging. Yeah, that's as good a job as I'm gonna be able to do.
Leaking is coming from the top of the uh, gate valve, but there's no water entering. Critically. Anyway, it now looks like shit, I really cut myself badly. Fuck. I might want to fix that so I don't cut myself while I'm in the fucking lake. I'm now going to open this hatch, but not this one until three days have passed. This one has the banner, by the way. So that hasn't gone away. I just need to be able to see the hygrometer slash thermometer in this one. Let's open the hatch. This is kind of a momentous occasion. Not really, because I haven't completed the connection but Hampshire appears to have already discovered the tube and he's in the tunnel And mostly blocked it with his wheel, as hamsters are wont to do. You know, it's irresponsible, but I'm right here. I'm right here watching, so if something goes wrong with it, I'll be able to do something. It would be a shame not to open both hatches. So even though this still needs to be shut off from this habitat, this one has to be sealed off from that for testing, I think I'm going to open the hatch temporarily. Right now he has free reign. He can go from one end to the other. This is it, this is what I've been working for. They're kind of at odd angles because it's mounted to an inwardly sloped wall of the habitat. I don't know what to do about that. Here he goes. Going through that tunnel. Eventually, in his own time. It's one small step for Ham, one giant leap for Hamkind. Yes! Ha ha ha. He's like, what the fuck? There's another room now. Since when is there another room? It's too much. He can't handle it. Yeah, that's just enough visibility. I thought I might want it longer, but this is long enough. And it takes much less time to purge. There you have it. Now the seal is habitat up and he has to say goodbye to it for three days. What a tease. All this time and money. All this blood, sweat, and tears. Is this what it means to be a mad scientist? WHAT AM I FIGHTING FOR?!